And here we go. Five and six and seven and eight. My name is Amy Harrell, and I'm a graduate of the University of Georgia's dance department in 1997. Right now, I'm dancing with a small new company called De La Dance Company, and it was started by a husband and wife who used to dance with the Cincinnati Ballet. I've had the opportunity to dance Coppelia, and Full Length Giselle, and many different other small roles. My generation, when I was going to school, it also was helpful that things were changing a little bit. It used to be that you were just graduating right out of high school and or dancers were going into companies at 16 and by the time you were 27, you're, you were pretty much done with your career. So I was lucky in that I was in that generation where it started to become more the norm that people did appreciate dancers who went to college, got a little more training under their belts, got a little bit more versed in, in their development and then were able to still have a, a professional career after college. I think that was probably the stigma up until that time that, you know, college was for the people who weren't going to make it in, in a professional career. Whereas now it's so much more, it's almost that most dancers will go to college for dance, even if they're looking to get into a professional career after that. Ethnic has been my, my home away from home, my dance home since I graduated um, in 97. Well, I ended up with Ethnic because of the opportunity that you presented to us, uh, the ballet ensemble at that time, it was 1996, and we were collaborating with Ethnic to do the second act of Urban Nutcracker. Nina and Waverly, the co-artistic directors of the company, have, um, they came and did a residency at UGA my senior year and I had the opportunity to work with them and got to perform with Waverly and some things that Ms. Joan had been choreographing. When I saw Amy at the University of Georgia, uh, I realized that she was a dancer that, was, that had consistency. And consistency is something that I've always valued. She's completely committed to what she's doing. She does not apologize when she dances. And ultimately, she's a joy and a pleasure to watch. And so that's what I saw. And when I saw that, I said, like, this is what I want the standard for Ethnic to be. So that's why we always knew that Amy was a very big part of not just dancing for Ethnic Dance Company, but for the overall mission of our organization and the overall mission of helping to create professional dancers that have the kind of work ethic that we desire in the field. As I was training growing up and even through school, through, through UGA, that's always been a, a huge concern of mine that, that, gosh, you don't have the typical physical attributes that a classical ballet dancer would, would have. And we had that opportunity with Ethnic to come in and work with us for a, an extended period of time so that they were able to see, oh, okay, well, she may not be the perfect ballet, classical ballet specimen, but she's a consistent worker and she, she's open to, to change and she's open to correction. So in that respect, hopefully, people were more willing to give me a chance. The degree was such an important part of my personal growth. I mean, I did have to expand my academic mind also, because it wasn't just that we came in there and we got to dance around the studio all day. I came from a, a dance studio where ballet was the main focus all the time, and to come to the university and have all of a sudden to have to take modern, to have to take Graham, to take jazz, to do Appalachian clogging, to do um, Kore traditional Korean dance was, you know, the, you're touching all of these different things that, you know, are giving you the opportunity to see what what you have to do to be a successful dancer. And you know, some people didn't have a hard time with anatomy, but that was hard for me. And the kinesiology, even Dr. Wheeler's um, rhythmic analysis class was so helpful. 
then I've also been doing a lot of substitute teaching at the Performing Arts High School here as well because they needed a dance person with a degree. Cincinnati Public School System, in order to be a substitute teacher, you do have to hold a bachelor's degree. Dance people who were very versed and who were very capable of going in there to do the subbing, they were not able to because of how it's set up. When I do remember when, when I told my parents I wanted to get a degree in dance, they were thinking, what are you gonna do with that? <laughs> Here's one real life example that it actually worked for me. So whether it's that, whether it's teaching in a performing arts high school, which I know a lot of the girls that I went to school with, you know, many of them now are teaching dance in, in high schools or middle schools. So there's these real world type of situations that you get into and you go, oh, okay, so that is useful for us. And not that we didn't think that at the time. I always see myself teaching, whether it's in a private studio, whether it might be at a school. At the University of Georgia, I was in the dance education track mm -hmm. and got my education degree for dance. So it was just natural that I would go ahead and start teaching. Mm -hmm. And it's great that these students get to work with professional dancers. Mm -hmm. You get to see these, these students grow up. You know, you start teaching them when they're five years old, like the one student that now does parts that I've been doing in the in Balletnik's repertoire. And she's now doing these on a professional level. So Miss Amy was able to not only impart that early foundational ballet knowledge, but to come back and to share some of her veteran skills with Layla Howard, who is now our next generation ballethnic dancer. It's so important to have that person-to-person -person contact and to learn from somebody who in turn has, they've learned from somebody and they've learned from somebody. And it's that the personal one-on-one -on -one connection of, of taking the time and taking the care to work with somebody to develop them into, into what we know as classical dance. Mm -hmm. As a performer, we get addicted to that feeling of, wow, like, that was great, and, but you know what? I could do it better next time. wouldn't be the person or the dancer that I am today without that, that four years of my life.